Benson with parkbench.com. I'm here in Cherry Hill, about to introduce you to an amazing dance studio that I think you all need to know about. I need to tell you about ZZ Dance. with parkbench.com and I'm here with Sammy Zwiebit and Meredith Ziemba from ZZ Dance in Cherry Hill. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you Thank for you. being here. Now, how about the basics? Tell me, what is ZZ Dance? ZZ Dance is a dance studio that we created from dreams of having a place where everybody is included and welcome and there's a space and a place for everybody to be themselves and dance. And how did, how did this dream start? I know a little bit about you guys, you grew up dancing, but having that dream and making it a reality is different. Um, well, the dream started very, very long ago and Sammy and I have been the closest of friends for 30 plus years and um, dance was always a huge part of our journey, um, both together and alone. We both went out to college and danced and really always, um, uh, it was part of our careers as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we also found our partnership to be such a perfect blend because I take care more of the business side of things and she does more of the teaching and creative side of things that we're like, wow, this could really be great. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, um, stemming off of a lot of the work that we did together previously for um, charities and uh, special needs groups and things, we just really wanted a place where we can take all of, all of those dreams to the next level. So the best place to do it is in our own place. <laughs> We'd love for people to know what what classes do you offer? You know, who is this for? Is this just for little kids? Is this for grown-ups? Um, we have classes for everybody from 18 months into adulthood, and we have all different types of dancing, and we have classes for ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, contemporary, musical theater, lyrical, um, and we also have classes for children with special needs, and this year we're expanding into uh, adults with special needs too. Yeah, and those classes gear more towards uh, hip hop and street jazz and just a big dance party. We also have um, a variety of levels. So we have um, kids that love to come once a week just as a fun activity mm -hmm. and uh, dance with their friends. And then we have kids that are on our competitive team that are here anywhere up to like 12 hours a week and dance their hearts out and you know uh, compete uh, at various local competitions so it was important to us that whether you come one hour a week or 12 plus hours a week that everybody feels welcome and part of the zz community and experience because a lot of children are very happy just taking one hour and some want more and just can't do it because of school or other reasons. And uh, I think we did a good job making sure everybody felt welcome. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, some kids, um, not myself, you know, you know, people like me loved it, but didn't quite have that natural talent built in. Sure. So it's kind of like you love it, but you know, you're not going to be a professional one day that you still get this, you know, amazing experience with friends. And, yeah. You know, that it's, that's really all it's about. So I know you guys talked about that you, the perfect relationship between the two of you, a lot of it that has to deal with, you have very different sides. You know, you're kind of the business side, you're more upfront. So tell me about your backgrounds, you know, how this came together that, you know, what are your lives outside of ZZ Dance? <laughs> sure. Um, so uh, what, another cool thing is we both grew up here in Cherry Hill. So, mm -hmm. um, Grew up here, went to Cherry Hill East, um, went on to University of Illinois for myself. Uh, I was both on the dance team there and an accounting major, which clearly lends itself into the business <laughs> side of things. Um, I went into corporate America for, for a good amount of time and realized that that wasn't the best place for me, although it gave me a, a really awesome background mm -hmm. to, to start my own business. 
Um, and from there, went on to actually run uh, other dance studios and really then just decided it was time for, for me to do that for myself and wanted the best uh, partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. I, I guess I should also mention that I, in the meantime, also have a, a four-year-old. <laughs> so, and then um, I clearly went on the way. So yes, there's a life outside of all of this too. <laughs> she has a husband too. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I went to, um, right after high school, went to college at, at, the, at Towson University and I was a member of their dance team for four years and they are nationally ranked and were number one in the country for many, many, many years while I was on the team too. And from there, I didn't major in dance, but I majored in film and television. So I learned all the behind the scenes, how to produce, direct, write, create. And I moved to New York City where I studied acting. So I got both sides of the camera, but also I danced the whole way through. So Five Years in New York took me to Los Angeles where I acted in movies and television and, and shows and really learned about um, people, honestly, and, and just the creative side of life. And I'm really, really grateful I did that. I was able to come here and give that to the kids that there's, there's life beyond high school. There's mm -hmm. life beyond dance. You know, you can take your dance and do anything with it. You can become a teacher. You could become a creator, a choreographer. You can dance for fun or you can dance professionally, but there is a life for, for people that are creative. And I'm very lucky that Meredith, uh, we've talked about this for so long, but really pushed me in the right direction to do it as a business because now we're able to do it with our kids all the time and just give them the creative outlet that most people need. And if they don't know they need it, everybody needs a creative outlet. And I know you're still going back and forth to LA as well. Mm -hmm. So between these outside lives, families, you know, um, when do you sleep? <laughs> well, I was thinking that maybe this year we worked 20 hour days. <laughs> I, so never. It's a big year. It was a big year. Um, but we're also, what's really awesome about having a partnership is we hold each other accountable to take that time off. So we, we, we put each other in check and make sure like we still come back to reality of like, this is a dance studio. It doesn't need, it, this, we're not saving lives. We're not, you know, we're not. So it is okay to put it down and go home and, and spend some quality time with family too. So. We yeah, don't. we have other, we take different days off from the studio. We're never mm -hmm. quite off because there's things that always need to be um, dealt with in, in, in all different ways. So, so one of us is always here, but uh, one of us at some point needs to tell the other one to go home. I told you to go home yesterday. You were here a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I said, what are yes. you still doing here? <laughs> because we do that to each other. So a lot of people don't realize the struggles involved with start not just owning a business starting a business keeping it moving a lot of stuff behind the scenes um what do you think some of the struggles were you for getting forward that and and then also what are some of like the things you're most proud of you know from starting this business i think our biggest struggle was the unknown of like are we you know you, you what did we do? Yeah, and, and I felt I feel like we felt really confident because we've been in this business for so long about the vision that we had and what we wanted to do. It was really like, our, our kid's going to walk in the door. Like, you just, you're not really sure. And um, clearly, the two of us being from this area and, and many people moving back with their kids. So it's, it is a lot of our generation and our friends that are around that supported us and came in amounts that we could never have even imagined for year one so luckily that wasn't an issue but i think going into it that was probably our biggest concern of just not knowing if we were going to have dancers <laughs> you know? that was our biggest concern but then our biz biggest obstacle was COVID. right yeah so uh, that was the biggest source of my stress i was nervous that kids were going to be sick i was nervous that i was going to bring it home um, to my family to my partner i was nervous that we were going to do something wrong so we tried to follow what the guidelines were we still are following them um, that's really hard it's really hard these children were the best not one kid gave us an issue wearing masks 
Now, if you're vaccinated, they are able to show us their vaccination card. And as of today, they're allowed to be in here without masks if they're vaccinated. That could change at any moment. Mm -hmm. But we, we follow the guidelines and the rules and what we think in our hearts is the right thing to do. Um, so for me, I was always nervous when the phone rang or the email came through that someone was sick. The great news is everybody was okay. And um, those that did get sick didn't spread it here. So mm -hmm. the masks, thank goodness, worked. And I feel like that was, I'm sure it's gonna be a continued stress into this fall, because it's not over yet. But I mm -hmm. think for me, that was our greatest obstacle. Mm -hmm. you know, how do you teach dance class via Zoom? Yeah, you do. Uh, you do, but <laughs> not in fun. It, you know, there's an energy that happens in the room just mm -hmm. talking to people. There's always, we have great Wi Fi, and then one day, you know, if it's thundering out, you're like, oh, look at that Wi Fi went down. Or <laughs> people at home don't have good Wi Fi sometimes, and everybody's like, hello, hello, which is disruptive to the people in the class, which is disruptive to them at home. So it's, it was, I'm great. I'm so grateful for Zoom, but I'm so happy it's done for right now. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and I think you asked us what are we most proud of? Mm -hmm. I don't, you want to start? <laughs> Sure. Um, <laughs> and it can be different for both of you, obviously. Yeah. Um, I am proud, I guess, um, just that we get to see, and un uh, mostly under masks, but see these smiling faces of these kids mm -hmm. in a year that smiles were few and far between, unfortunately. Um, this this really did become a place which, and we heard a lot of feedback from both kids and parents that this was the one place that, that was making them happy through it. And like, so as much as the pandemic was such a huge struggle, it also provided a new sense of um, priority for people mm -hmm. and um, uh, gratitude. And we're fortunate to have been able to function through it, get through the tough spots so that we were able to to make those kids happy. And that was a really- And provide an outlet for them. You know, I'm sure not, you know, kids don't always realize the stress that they're carrying, but here it's this source of happiness for them, source to let off that stress. Yeah. I am proud of all, all of it, honestly. I am surprised that we had such a fabulous year, not because I didn't think we could do it, but because the unknown is scary. I'm proud that something that Meredith has talked about her whole life with me, but uh, a lot of Meredith's desire was going to business school to open a dance studio, and she promised me it was going to be okay because I was nervous. But. Um, I am proud of her and I'm proud. I say a lot. Sometimes I look at her and I'm like, what just happened? I'm proud of us. I'm really proud of us. And Zizi Gibbs. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. So that I, that's always been part of my world is just charity work. And we wanted so badly to be able to do it all year long. And so everything that we do at ZZ Dance has a charity aspect attached to it. Our biggest event that every child and parent, grandparent that uh, goes here, every child, was in, included in this big charity event at the end of the year called ZZ Gives, and we raised oh almost $60,000 for Make-A-Wish New Jersey. Oh um, and they received our check and they're just blown away because it's the most money that in all the years that we've done charity work that we've ever raised for, for a charity or for them. So that was awesome. And watching the kids be able to, um, Want, like the desire for them to want to do good is so mm -hmm. awesome, especially in a tough year when everything was stripped away from a lot of people, they still wanted to give. That was pretty awesome. And I'm just proud that everything we do, we donate We donate to a cause. We, we, we hold t-shirt sales, a portion goes to charity. We held pizza sales, 100% went to charity. You know, we we really try that we are, we're fortunate enough to be in a place that people want to give and can give and do give. Our competition team wins, sometimes wins prize money, and they have the option of what they want to do with it, and everybody always chooses to, to donate oh, it. That's yeah, no child said, I would like to keep it. Every child said, please, please donate it. That's amazing, mm -hmm. that yeah. is so amazing. So that's how we got to the almost $60,000 from all those things that we did, all those mini events led up to this big charity event all of our money this year went to make a wish in New Jersey and I hope to always be affiliated with them. I, mean, I am an ambassador to them, but I also want to hopefully in the future spread the love to other charities as well. That's so amazing. And it's just amazing the way that you're sharing your love of charity with the community and it just, 
I love that. The kids are awesome. They have awesome parents. They, the parents are behind us with all of it. So they, you know, obviously if kids are holding a lemonade stand outside or making bracelets, the parents are facilitating it. So yep. we are very grateful to the parents as well. Now, I wanna to talk to you about this facility because it is absolutely beautiful. Now, granted, it, it started from scratch and so you could kind of put your own spin on it and like you said, you were dancing your entire childhood, so I'm sure you knew you know, what you wanted, what you didn't want. Walk me through the space. What were the things that were really important to you when designing it? Uh, one thing that was very important to us was to have a quiet room, we call it the homework room, for children that are here for hours on end. Maybe they have a break, maybe they have a sibling that's dancing and they're just waiting to take their own class. Mm -hmm. It's a quiet room, no food, no phones. It's, it's in the front of the studio, so it's away from all the dance, it's in the front of the building, so it's away from all the dance studios. And kids can go in there and study and learn and do their homework while they're waiting. That was important to me, Mary. Um, it was also important for us to make sure that our faculty was comfortable. So we have a beautiful faculty lounge where it, you know, no kids are allowed. So they have their own space. They have their own bathroom. It is, you know, it, it can be challenging when you're around kids all the time and you just like need a moment. So we want to make sure that, <laughs> that they had that stocked with snacks and a fridge and a microwave because a lot of our teachers are here for many hours at mm -hmm. a time. So we want to make sure that they were comfortable too. We have a space um, designed just for the kids. So it's our, it's our lounge and there's um, drinks and, and vending machines and bleachers and cubby holes and everything that they could want. Uh, microwave and fridge as well for them. So they have their own space as well. A lot of these kids are here for hours on end and they just have their own space that also has dressing rooms so they can jump in and get changed and jump out and so nobody's changing in the open. Um, that was important. Yeah, and then with, uh, with in, inside the room, certainly safety is top priority. We put it, we needed to put in the, the best flooring just to keep every you know there's a lot of jumping and things, so we need to make sure that everybody is is safe when they're dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and our ballet bars that you can see behind us. <laughs> um, and then actually in in the other studios, um, it was we really want to uh, have the opportunity to invite. Uh, parents and loved ones into the studio to put on some performances mm -hmm. and um, obviously for this year it wasn't a we weren't able to do that but in the future that's the plan so what we did was we actually have a movable wall between two of our studios yeah, so nice. it yeah so the so the wall comes out essentially and opens up two of the studios into one huge space and ideally that would be a you know turn into a performance space so mm -hmm. how many actual dance studios do you have have. Four. Four. And when we open up the wall, it becomes like a big three. One. Yeah, a huge, a huge one. Oh my god, that is so awesome. Thank well, you. Well, so we talked about Cherry Hill, you're both from here and everything. How'd you choose this location? You know, why why here? You know, why did you decide to stay in Cherry Hill? What was it about this space that you're just like, nope, this is where we're gonna be? And we looked all over and to in ta surrounding towns as well. It just felt really nice, the building, the landlord, everything just felt really good here. Springdale Road is kind of a thoroughfare, so mm -hmm. it felt it felt like a nice place that bridges a lot of uh, towns. Yes, having the Cherry Hill address was important to us um, just because of, of our history and becoming a, a Cherry Hill business just meant something extra special. Um, but also being in a place in Cherry Hill where it does bring in the other neighboring towns too as we support all these local businesses that are mm -hmm. um, in, in all of our neighboring towns as well. Um, and part of it also was we took a few spaces that we were seeing and actually mapped out what, what would work because <laughs> building dance studios is kind of, you kind of need the particular amount of space to yep. fit things in. So it was it's all laid out nicely. Exactly. Oh, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, so I love to ask everybody this, what is the importance of shopping local, supporting small businesses? so much. <laughs> I just really think we, it's important to us in the same way to give back to charity, to give back to your town and to keep it in, keep it locally for many reasons, just because now we also know what it's like to be two local girls just with a dream. And it's, it's much harder to shop locally 
but I think the reward is, is greater when you know you're helping a family when you go to um, a local hardware store versus getting the on, names we won't say. Yes, <laughs> get, getting it on a big conglomerate. So I think that it's just, it's the right thing to do if you can do it. If it, it's available, I've always lived like that. We, we've talked about it a lot. Um, a lot of big companies also don't support uh, things that are important to me. So mm -hmm. I stay away from any company that's against my beliefs. And usually, usually smaller mom and pop local stores have more of a family vibe anyway. Yeah, no, I absolutely second all of that. I think we have a new appreciation for it, um, being in the shoes and just knowing how hard everyone works. And not to say that people don't work hard at, at, at large stores right. too, um, but you know, nothing's being handed to these people. So mm -hmm. they are doing everything on their own and um, it's just a lovely way to also keep keep your town different. You know, it's, it's so frustrating to go to every other town and see all the same things. It looks exactly the same. Yeah, so how much m more lovely is it when you walk through a little town and you see all the different, uh, you know, new stores that you've never seen before, so. Totally. I would love to come back to a little point you made about, you know, one, I mean, it's written right on the door about, you know, kindness and everything. And you talked about a space that you wanted to be completely inclusive. And there's one thing that I would really love to talk to you more about. You talked about, you know, even classes for special need kids and all of this stuff. Like, you wouldn't think, you know, in a typical dance studio, you know, kids of all ages, sizes, abilities, you know, they still have that love that, you know, can you tell me more about that and how? Sure. Also, I want to say that we do have classes for children with special needs, but we have a lot of our core classes, which are generally neurotypical children that have special needs, children with special needs in there. So it's not that we find out that somebody's special needs and we put them into the, right. this, to a specific class. We wait for the parents to come to us and say, I have this child with A, B, C, and D. Do you have a class for them? And we actually talk about each individual child and which class is the best for them. Because one of my classes, I do have a child with cerebral palsy. She's, she does great in the class. So she's in both, actually. She decided to do both classes because she's wonderful and she wants to be a part of both both classes and we welcome that. So we just also our the special needs class that we have participated in everything just like everybody else, yeah. which was so awesome. They were a part of our recital. They were a part of ZZ Gives. They did. Um, we hope like to do more with them next year too. Yeah, everything that every other class did too. So they got the full experience. I think before, if parents didn't have an option, they wanted very badly for their children to be in a recreational class with you know other children their age but there's something so special about having a place with children and they just feel they feel like superstars because they are they just finally don't need to do splits and leaps and pirouettes the same way it's yep. just a different type of dancing so that's wonderful and um also worry about Sammy for a second Pandemic also did, did us some favors as she took her time to to um, to go through a program called Rhythm Works, which gives her the actual accreditation to teach these. Oh, classes. Well, tell me more about this, please, Brad. Brad, I want this information. So I taught special needs classes in Los Angeles, but they were usually one-offs, right? Or I taught some in Marlton for another nonprofit we love, Holton's Heroes. I taught some dance classes for their heroes. That was wonderful. And I always loved it, but there was no space for me to do it anywhere weekly. So once ZZ was uh, a brain in the brain, I went, I did it. Well, it was all online. I wanted to do it in the past, but it was so far away. It was so expensive or it was just not tangible. And then all of a sudden when the pandemic hit, I feel bad even saying this. I was grateful to have that time mm -hmm. to do it online. They offered it online and it was it was wonderful. I mean, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of studying again after not studying for a long time. I'm really happy I did it. It just uses it uses hip hop movement, sometimes with props. We didn't use any props this year because of COVID, but to just move your body and get to know your body in a certain way. A lot of our children um, their bodies don't work typically like other children, mm -hmm. a lot of our special needs kids. So we just work with them. And I have one-on-one -on -one helpers with almost all of the children. So should they need more assistance or actual physical touching to move them, um, we have that. What's also been really cool to see about this program is 
that be the assistance that she was just referring to, that's like a coveted role right now. Like every every one of our kids wants to be in that classroom to help these kids as well. Oh, that's awesome. And that's been really cool to see and how special that those relationships have been in forming. They're really like they've truly just become friends and they want to be in there. And it's really it's just giving them um, uh, you know, making everybody comfortable with with assisting that, and it's just really awesome to see. And it's hard because you, um, some of the children with special needs seem fragile, and so me giving permission to say you can grab their hands, you can move their arms. All of a sudden, when they get the permission, they're dancing together, and that's just a beautiful sight to see. That was there was a specific incident that that incident a specific. Um, Occurrence. Occurrence. Thank you. That happened yesterday where one of, it was a new child in our ZZ Jams class was uh, in here and I asked one of the assistants to help move her arms and she I, she looked at me like, I don't want to hurt her. And I said, you're not going to hurt her. And all of a sudden it was like a party. It was so cute. So <laughs> I'm really, really happy that we are able to have that class. I think we might even need to, to split it into two because we are... We are growing in um, numbers in the ZZ Jams community. And last year, I, don't, I didn't think we'd have enough children to split by age. And I think we'll have it, and maybe not this year, but in the future, which is really cool. That is a wonderful problem to have, yeah. to be so busy and successful that everybody wants to be in this class. Um, Thank you. And it's just to know that you realize that it's so important to adapt. You know, you can't just have like dance be this one thing. You know, I mean, it's for, you know, we all grew up dancing or you don't want to see it, but, um, <laughs> you know, and it's so, I love when you start to see different styles of dance come out. You know, it always used to be like ballet was, you know, the tutus and the tiaras right. and like, and that was it. And now it's, you know, all different types of movement. And it's not just, oh, if it's not that, it's modern. No, it's, you right. know, every, it can be, it's just about the movement and the music and enjoying it and the fact that you're showing all different kids right a big it's part of our inclusivity too was making sure that we stay gender neutral because that's a big a big part of dance has always yep. been geared towards the girls and, and always getting made fun of or right. being scared that like oh if they're gonna want to do ballet and right. not do you know break dancing oh right. you're like assisting it's like no we yeah. just they just want to move yeah and so we really really try hard to have ways to bring the boys in to make them feel comfortable um to have men on our staff to you Absolutely. know uh, in various ways um we also provide a discount for boys because we just know it's still a hurdle to get over yeah. to to make sure that they feel good about about yeah. being here so we're we're very um, careful and want to and just want to invite everybody with open arms because dance is for everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, in other countries, it's celebrated when men dance. It's not. It is not a thing, and mm -hmm. it just seems it's a little bit harder here. And we're we're trying in our little small town in New Jersey to <laughs> open everybody's eyes or help open everybody's eyes. You know, you've had an amazing year, amazing season. But, you know, obviously you didn't start this to be just like a short term project. You know, what would you love to see from ZZ Dance? <laughs> I'll, I mean, a lot. I want to see a lot. I want to, I, I want, a, on the smaller level, I want to just keep doing what we did this year because I think it was successful in making people feel welcome, giving a safe space to dance, and it works. So I want that to always be where we put the kids first because that's very important to us mm -hmm. and their happiness is number one. On a bigger level, I would love if we raised $60,000 this year, I want to only always go up. I would never want to raise less. Um, so we have to come up with even more ways to make that happen because we did, I thought we did everything we could this year. So how are we going to outdo that charity number? Mm -hmm. And then I would love to see ZZ Dance. I don't know where, but in, in other places that need, they need dance. Mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't need to be a location in another state, but can we go more into the community and have ZZ Dance like after school programming, ZZ Dance at the Boys and Girls Club, ZZ Dance at um, Big Brothers Big Sisters and offer these classes to bridge the gap between all of our communities. Everybody's right here and we have this big space where either children that want dance can come here or we can go to other people. And we started to this year. 
Absolutely. All, all of that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what um, she said. <laughs> what she said. Yes, pretty much. Um, yeah, we want to, we certainly want to continue to grow, but like you said, growing for us is um, in, in various ways. You don't want to get, we, we don't ever want to get so big that we have so many kids that we lose track. Like mm -hmm. one of the most important things is we know everybody's name and we want to always know everybody's name. So it's, you know, um, so we're, we're kind of careful about that, but there's so many other ways to, to grow. Um, and one of the things that we lost out on this year was local performances. So mm -hmm. that's another, we would love to see more of that happening, which we think, you know, we'll, we will be able to as things continue to open up um, and just being able to, to share our joy of dance with, with more of our community. I love that. Well, Sammy Zweeden, Meredith Ziemba, thank you so much for having me at ZZ Dance. I'm Hillary Emson from parkbench.com. Uh, please check out ZZ Dance. They would love to have you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.